good morning and welcome to Painting with Hatcher. As I promised, this is going to be an introduction. Also, my sidekick, one-armed Saki Monkey. He's special to me because my great-grandmother gave him to me when I was born. And he may be older than me, I'm not sure. But he's at least 51. So today on Painting with Hatcher, the plan is to introduce beginning painting to those who may be either scared of painting or have been out of painting for a long time um, young kids whoever's wanting to paint so basically we're going to run through different types of materials that you may use and uh, how to be cost effective about it so that you're not intimidated by the amount of money you may need to spend to begin the process of painting. So first, most people associate painting with what? Paint brushes. Yes. Well, I have way too many paint brushes, but you can never have enough paint brushes. Like when I go to the golf course, I usually don't take enough golf balls, but I never run out of brushes. And I can't lose them. So, we have regular house painting brushes. They're all cheap, I promise. Never spent more than, if you broke it down and itemize it, 50 cents for some of them. Now this brush is a blender brush and everybody, everybody recognizes it, I'm sure. Um, from the 80s maybe but you know that's beside the point the late Bob Ross I gotta plug the man he's not the one that got me started in painting by the way my aunt did I hope she's watching this if she's not she will alright now real painting brushes Obviously they're real because I'm holding them, but what people consider artist type brushes. The long handle ones, most people associate with oil painting. We have our fan brush. We have our liner brush. It looks kind of bushy, but when you put the paint on it and you pull it through the paint and make it pointy, you can sign your name, make tree branches, whatever. We have a flat brush, a small line brush, very small. Looks like there's no hair on the end of it. Anyway, we have flats and filberts and uh, angled flats and just an assortment. When you go to an art supply store, You'll see all the choices and they'll be labeled so you don't get confused. Most oil paint brushes are sometimes, most of the time like sable. Um, they're the more spendy brushes and the prices can go down or up like badger hair. Anyway, these are what you call low economical brushes. But these are awesome if you're just doing a little painting. They're very fine. It's the same kind of brushes that we just went over, except they're very small. Some of them are hard for me to deal with because of the size of my hands, but. Now this is a pretty big flat brush. This is good for putting your, uh, maybe glazing or putting your final coats on after the paint is dried. It has a glossy effect. Basically, we have knives, all shapes and sizes to paint paintings with just the knives or mixing the paint on the canvas. 
you can never have too many utensils to paint with. You can paint with your fingers. You can paint with sticks. Another Bob Ross knife. His was painted black though, so it didn't glare on the camera. I distinctly remember him saying that. And his palette also. I hardly use the palette when I'm painting, stand here and hold a palette. Um, it's just more comfortable for me to just let it sit on the table next to me. That way I can look away long enough and my left arm doesn't get tired of holding a palette. And it's just a personal preference. So, now that we've gone over brushes, let's look at canvases. Canvases can really eat into the pocketbook or the wallet, in my case. Um, I do have a man purse. Anyway, um, it's right here. Just so you know, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> that was not a joke. <laughs> I carry this with me when I go out. I've carried it to the doctor's office. I've carried it to the, the VA. I've carried it in the library. And believe it or not, you don't get strange looks like I would back when I was a kid. This canvas is an eight by 10. They sometimes come in bundle packages of 10, and you can maybe get those for approximately $15. Sometimes they have them on sale, but they're excellent when you're just wanting to do a painting and consider it to be a sketch so that you can do a larger painting later. And then we have, there's other sizes in between that one and this one, which is a 11 by 14. By the way, these canvases are three quarters inches thick. Um, they're made out of pine frames with a pre-primed canvas. Okay, basically, now that I've mentioned the three quarters thick canvas, um, when they're small, it doesn't really affect too much as far as warpage or staying square, because when you put it in a frame, you can re-square it or if the canvas gets loose, which the uh, lower end prices, um, you can see that my finger is actually making a dent. It's like a drum. Hot for the teacher. Anyway, basically when they start getting larger, we have a cross stretcher. Well, it doesn't really do anything except keeping this wood straight. It has no effect on the canvas whatsoever because you can't really tighten the canvas with it. It still relies on the corners. And these get very floppy because of the size. Now, having said that, this one's still in the cellophane wrapper. It has the same construction, but it's even worse. I'm actually working on a painting now that I would have rather put it on a museum wrap quality, which I'll show you in a second, um, because it just, you can't keep it tight. And if you put the tighteners in, basically you drive them through the canvas on the ends <laughs> and it, it doesn't keep it tight. Now, when you put it in the frame, it'll fix that. But you know, that size frame is very expensive. So it's best to spend the money on the canvas. Which, now that we've said that, we have the museum wrap type canvas. See, we have the thickness here, okay? And the construction is way better. It's like, it's still the same pine, but you can even feel the weight difference. The canvas, they do not get out of square as bad and you still have the option of framing them. But in most galleries, once you learn how to paint and you get good at it and you find yourself in a gallery, they don't require you to frame them, most of them, because it's modern painting. So next, we've covered canvases pretty good. Paints. This paint is about 25 years old. The reason I'm showing you this is when I first uh, 
started buying paints. I've been painting longer than that, but I thought I would try this. So I thought, hey, it's white. I need a lot of white. So I bought this big tube, but it's zinc white. You don't use a lot of zinc white, but it's still soft and malleable and I can still use it um, for mixing or I can thin it down and use it to prime a canvas with a thicker coat. You can buy small tubes. You can buy famous artist tubes. I'm sure somebody's making money off of that somehow. Um, but Mr. Van Gogh doesn't even know it. So, like I said, I do recommend if you're gonna buy a large tube of white, make it titanium white. It's, it's softer. Um, basically, I'll squirt a little bit out. Of course, it has the linseed oil on the top, but you can see it comes out like toothpaste. You can play a joke on April Fools and use it, put it in there in the bathroom, put a toothpaste wrapper around it. Of course, it's, it's not poison, so it'd be funny. Anyhow, basically when you go to an artist supply store, paints, you're gonna be overwhelmed looking at paints. Even professional artists, such as myself, buy cheap paint. And when I say cheap paint, I don't mean um, the bottom, bottom, bottom line because there is no cheap oil paint. Now, if you get acrylics, you can get that for 50 cents. But it does the same thing. It's good for folk art. Um, people use it all the time painting on um, plywood. Um, if you go out into the antique markets, you'll see folk art out there. And chances are that's made with cheap paint, but it doesn't matter because it's made for the interior and you don't usually hang your paintings outside. So, big whoop, right? right. Now you can get high-end paints and you will spend the money, but I don't recommend it until you're really, really bringing in some money on your artwork. <laughs> so, having said that, the difference between paints, we have acrylic, it's more watery because it's water based. This is thicker because you can use linseed oil, wa uh, walnut oil. Um, basically, once you, if you take the time to experiment with them, paint a little bit with them, practice, 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 you'll figure it out and realize that, hey, I can paint with acrylic and get it done faster because you got to wait for this to dry unless you mix it with liquid. That's another video someday. All right, now that we covered paints, we're not gonna spend too much time on palettes because I only have one. So, this is a wooden palette. I don't really stand and hold a palette like so, like a traditional, unless um, maybe if I'm outside, I might do that if it's windy or something because I've, I've had my stuff blow off of the easel or my table and you have to chase it down and then it's full of grass and if i'm painting water you don't want grass in your water <laughs> so then you wasted all that paint but what i do is i got a piece of glass tape to this so you can either wipe it off while it's wet with a paper towel or let it dry and scrape it off with a palette knife see i told you the palette knife's coming handy all right basically that's your palette Okay, let's look at our sources. If we're, our sources, if we're gonna paint, whatever. I have my system, you can come up with your own. I have a alphabetical file folder that some people use, you know, to keep their bills or whatever in. But, let's see what we got in the bees. Um, oh, a butterfly. Uh-huh, monarch. Correction, swallowtail. A tiger swallowtail. 
I just wanted to be sure I was saying swallowtail. <laughs> and it is a swallowtail. All right. We have a caribou in the seas. All right, you get the gist of that. So, I have bears, I have dogs, I have cats, I have elephants. And it's not just animals, you know, it could be something in a tree line or a field or whatever. But it's in alphabetical order. Makes things a lot simpler. Now, when I go out on an excursion to paint, We'll cover easels and backpacks and whatever at the same time. Um, this easel is a French easel. Actually, I had the legs folded up so that it's now a table easel, but it's still a French easel. So, if you take the leg, it's a tripod mode. And you can adjust them if the terrain is not flat so that one leg can be shorter and the other two longer. We'll cover easels at a later date when I'm actually out in the field and you see it standing up so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, in the future we'll go over easels because there's a couple more kinds of easel I use, but I would rather you get a heads up on the types of materials you may want to carry out in the field. So, my man purse, as we discussed earlier, basically I have sketchbooks in here that I carry around with me everywhere. This one's a brand new one I just started. Um, it's going to have trees in it, okay? Real quickly, we have those of you that are on my Facebook page recognize this. This is going to be animals, probably endangered species. This is a Florida panther on the front. We have a hummingbird and a trumpet flower. This is going to be birds and bees. We have tractors, which you probably have seen this on my Facebook page when I'm standing at the easel painting in the field at a lavender farm. And we are all barn to be wild. And I have a barn in this one. The next part of my equipment I take for the outdoor excursion plein air painting would be a backpack. Um, it's also one of our Saki Monkey's ride. He enjoys it. I get some good looks. When I'm out with this, basically it's just a backpack. Put it on, and you got two free hands one for the easel and one for the tripod easel or anything else that you might need to carry water jug, stuff like that. I usually put water bottles in the backpack. So let's go over what's in the backpack real quickly. On the outside we have Saki Monkey. Hello. We have some masking tape to tape the paper down if you're doing watercolor. If you're not doing watercolor the canvas usually just locks into the easels. We have a, a Disney cup. Been using it quite a while for water, whether you're acrylic or watercolor. This helps hold pages, it's a clip, one of those, I'm not sure what you call it, alligator clip or something, but holds paper down in case it's windy. Okay, inside the big pouch, we have a paper cutter, so I can cut papers to five by seven or whatever I estimate I'm going to be putting it in a frame. You can pick that up real economical at a Walmart or Michaels has them. Um, this right here is nine by 12 watercolor paper. It's 140 pounds. Um, you can 
cut it down or keep it at the same size. I have, these are very cheap, like $4 paint palettes that you can mix. I have one for acrylic, so I don't have to carry big tubes of paint. I usually just load them up in the small wells here. I have one for gouache, one for acrylic, and one for watercolor. Now if I'm gonna do oil, obviously I keep those in the tubes. Basically, I have some sandwich Tupperware, whatever. Looks like a piece of bread, but it, it has charcoal in there. Okay, so I'm gonna do some charcoal sketching out there. This one has some small watercolor tubes in them. In it. Okay. Let's see. A ruler, just in case you need to do a straight horizon or something for a beach or a lake. Oh, this is my cigar stash. Macanudo. Basically though, this has um, things for drawing with uh, graphite, burnishers, more charcoal, lead holders, sandpaper to sharpen your leads, colored pencils, um, just erasers. It's like Christmas. Empty bag. I don't know why that's in there, but I'm gonna keep it in there because it's in there for a reason. Um, this is an old spice jar for cilantro, one of my favorite spices, but it has water in it. Okay. This is a spray bottle with water in it for doing your watercolor. But sometimes when it's hot outside, you gotta keep the paper wet so that it flows a little better for you. Some little napkins. Another paper bag. A piece of cloth to help you wipe the paint brushes off. And another small alligator tip there. More cloth. A pencil sharpener. Sometimes that's better than the sandpaper. If you break the lead, it'll take forever to sharpen it with a piece of sandpaper. And more cloth, and that's about it. And you got more pockets for the water bottles I talked about. Um, anyway, you can pick this up for under 20 bucks. And you might already have one at home if you have children that they no longer use for school or something. Um, my daughter has about 10 of them because we have to buy one every year, sometimes two. And now at school, they won't let them carry backpacks. And I have no idea why, because they still let them carry a bag with straps. Anyhow, that covers that. And next episode, we're going to paint a still life of a candlestick, um, a mug, it's a ceramic mug, um, with some fruit, and a little keepsake box made out of pewter. I'd like to thank everyone for watching the very first video of Painting with Hatcher on our very first YouTube channel. If you like what you see, please go to our Patreon page so that we can improve and keep this endeavor going.